Hey you guys, this is Guy Stevens. I'm making a little course for you, a very simple one, which will kind of serve as a sort of an introduction into FileMaker. We're going to make something very simple and I'm going to show you what we're going to make. It's a very simple contacts database where you have your contacts um, with your names, with some information, some address information. Um, you can create some notes for every contact. You can enter a picture for every contact. You can make tasks, things that you need to do. You need to write them, you need to call them. Those tasks uh, maybe need to be done for a certain date. Um, they might be urgent or not. And these tasks are either complete or still incomplete. You can um, show their location on a map. Um, it's not really going to work for this one, I think, because the address that I gave in is like a made-up uh, address. But uh, Google Maps works inside FileMaker if you want. Then if you want, you can see a list of all your contacts and then you can select one. I don't have a lot of them in here right now, but it's just a little, uh, a little exercise here. And you can select a certain contact. And then um, if you have all these tasks, uh, it might be annoying to kind of go through all your um, contacts to look for their tasks. So in the menu, I've made a task list where you can see all the tasks for every person and you can just very simply show all the incomplete tasks the tasks that you still need to do um, or show all the tasks or show all the completed tasks uh, you can very simply um, kind of go about um, finding out what it is that still needs to be done um, as I said a very simple exercise and it's going to show you the basics now um, maybe the first and most important basic is how do you get around in FileMaker and maybe it's good that I should tell you that first before we actually start building this thing. Now it's very simple, um, the layout, you have this big uh, banner up top and it kind of always looks pretty much the same and it um, it's pretty simple to understand so I'll try and explain it to you. We've just chosen for our contact so we are now at our contact layout and we can see up top that we have two contacts. We have this uh, little book thing that we can use to go to our first record and uh, our first contact and then we can kind of switch between the first and the second contact. Now normally you will have a lot more and then you can kind of browse through them. Now we've got two in total. Um, I can make a new one if I want. If I click new record then I can um, add Billy Bob. That's another contact of mine. And if I want I can delete a record if I don't like Billy Bob and I can delete him and then he will be gone. I can find people, so I can click on find and if I do, sometimes people get a little scared because all of a sudden all their information looks like it's gone. But it's not really gone, it's just been emptied and FileMaker is displaying all these little search symbols because you can basically look for any kind of, um, kind of in any kind of field that you want. If you're looking for someone with the last name of Doe, then you can do that and you can perform that find and you will find only the people named Doe. Now this orb has just changed. It was gray before and now it's green. It's green because it's telling me that FileMaker has found two out of three records. So I have a total of three contacts and two of them are named Doe. That was the one I was looking for. So I can browse back and forth and I can see that I have a Jane Doe and a John Doe. Now I can get a little panicky because I, I, I thought I had more contacts. Where did they go? Well, they're just they're just hidden because we're inside a found set right now. But I can show all my records. My orb turns uh, gray again and I can see all three and I can get back to my Billy Bob, which is my third one. If you want, while finding, you can search for multiple things at the same time. You can search the city and the last name and then you will find all the people that live in that city that have that last name. So that's a kind of a handy way to search for different things. Now if we cancel this find there is another search box right here that we can also use um, and this one if we enter a value into this search box it will kind of search over all the fields. So if you're looking for a guy named Doe we can do that and we will again find two Doe's. Now this works uh, very well most of the time unless if you're for instance dealing with numbers or something that can appear in multiple different fields then you might want to be a bit more specific by using your find and entering that field, entering the value in one specific field and only searching in that field. You can also search for multiple things. You can do a find and you can say find me all people that are called Doe and for instance also people that live in um, zip code 90210. I think I had one of those. If I perform my find then I will find one of three. So there's one Doe that lives in Beverly Hills apparently. 
and um, that way you can also find um, find people so that's um, those are kind of the things you have up top you can sort your records as well but in this kind of layout that is kind of useless you can go into the list view here where you can normally see all your um, all your contacts you can't see them now because we've done a find um, so we're gonna have to show them all again now we can sort them if we want we can sort for instance by full name but that's not very handy usually last name is handier so we can say contacts last name and then we can sort either ascending or descending by last name so then our Bob and Doe are all sorted a bit more appropriately you can sort by other things as well um, but mostly names will be sorted by last name that's gonna be kind of uh, handy so these are uh, basically the things you're going to be dealing with up top. You can share your database, database with other people, but that's a whole other section. We're not going to get into that right now. But the most of the navigation happens with these few buttons up top here. Um, and if you kind of get those and you understand how they work, then you've pretty much already figured out how to maneuver around in FileMaker. All right, this looks good. Um, I think we kind of get how we need to get around. Now let's actually go and build this thing. So let's get started and let's uh, start making our database. We're going to make a new one. You've also got starter solutions that you can use. Um, it gives you a lot of examples, which is kind of cool. Um, but I usually don't like to use these starter solutions because there's a bunch of stuff in there that you don't really know what it is or what it does. And it's sometimes a bit difficult to start changing these things. I always like to create a new database. And let's call this one, uh, how are we going to call this? Contacts. And if you make a new database, you can just make it entirely the way you want it to be. And you will also know exactly what's going on with every single field, every calculation field, every single script, everything that's going on in your file. Let's go to File Manage Database because this is basically the main part where you're going to be creating stuff, adding stuff, um, dealing with the tables, fields and relationships. You can also use the shortcut Control Shift D. So if we go there, we've got, uh, basically we've got three tabs here. We've got relationships, which we're gonna look at later when we have multiple tables. We've got fields and we've got tables. Now what's the difference? Tables is for instance a contacts table, which we actually kind of just um, created there, which FileMaker kind of created for us. Um, we've got fields, like for instance, every contact has a name, a first name, last name, address, stuff like that, those are the fields and um, uh, uh, so we're gonna uh, we've got our contact table so we're gonna be adding fields now um, FileMaker always creates this thing automatically and then it creates this layout but because it's already created the layout it hasn't added any fields to it so what you can do is you can just add fields to this one or you can just delete this one also remove occurrences from the graph and then you can just create a new one and that way um, contact and that way you will get um, all your fields added automatically. It's kind of a thing that I find a little strange in FileMaker, but well, it doesn't really matter. So let's create this one. Is This is actually a problem that only happens with the first file. Later on, if you start adding tables, uh, you won't have that problem. Okay, we've got our contacts table made. Now let's double click it or go to fields and select our contacts table. And let's start adding some fields. What kind of fields would we like? Um, a, a very important thing and the thing that I always start with in every single table is an ID field. We're going to enter the file, the field name in here and we're going to say that this ID, well an ID is actually a unique number for every contact so that we can uniquely identify every contact because you could have for instance two different two contacts that have the same name. It's not very likely but it is possible. So you need some way to uniquely identify every single contact. Um, it's going to be a unique number like I just said so the type of this field is going to be a number now if we create this then we basically have a simple number field and that means we'll have to manually enter that number ourselves which is a bad idea because we're going to forget it or we're going to use the same number twice and that's not really very foolproof I think FileMaker should be all about making everything really foolproof so let's double click this and see if FileMaker can't help us in uh, some way and we've actually got this option here to auto enter a serial number. We can keep all the settings that we have here. It's generated on creation, which is great. The next value is going to be one. It's going to, that means it's going to start at one and it's going to increment by one. So that's great. And that's basically all I need. Just a simple setting here that we do have to remember for every single table, we would like to have an ID field. 
like this. Okay, now let's start with our actual fields. What fields do we need for our contact? He's gonna have a name. Now, I think it's always smartest to store all your data in the smallest way possible. So the name is not gonna be stored completely. It's gonna be separated in first name. And that is not gonna be a number type. That's actually gonna be a text type and we can create that one. And if we have a first name, then we also have a last name. Now you can see that I'm not using any spaces here anywhere. I, th I think that's handier later on if you wanna select for instance, a field name in a calculation, it's handier that there are no spaces. This is also a text, that's great. Now you might be wondering, what if I want to use a full name? Isn't that simpler? Yes, uh, but it's very easy to take two different fields and place them together. It is almost impossible to take a single full name field and to go and extract the last names properly because you could have a uh, um, a person that has one first name and one last name, but you can have multiple first names, multiple last names, you can have these little parts in between, so it's almost impossible to go and extract last names later on. If you want to use a last name, for instance, in a letter or an email, you want to write dear mister and then the name, the last name, then you're going to have to have that last name separately. So now how do we combine those two in a full name? It's very simple with a very simple calculation. Now when I make a calculation field, so let's make it right now, I always use C underscore at the beginning of the field name and then we're going to call this one full name. This is not going to be a text file, this is going to be a calculation um, uh, field, sorry, no, I said file, and then we're going to create this one and as soon as we want to create a calculation field file maker is going to ask us to specify the calculation. Well, a uh, full name is very simple, it's the first name and the last name, but if we just add them like this well, that doesn't look very good. I can put a space in here, but I've got two different elements. I've got a first name and I've got a last name. If I want to combine these elements together, I need to use an operator. And the simplest operator is the ampersand. So let's put them in there. Oops, automatically adds a space. And um, there, uh, now I've got the first name and the last name. But if I do it like this, I'm gonna just have the first name and the last name stuck together. I would like to add a space in between. Now, if I just add a space, that's not going to work. A space is actually a piece of text, and text needs to be added between quotation marks. So I add a quotation mark, a space, and another quotation mark, and now I've successfully added a piece of text, but now I have three elements. So I've got the first name and the text and the last name. So I need to put another operator in between these two elements so that I've got this uh, first name and a space and a last name. Now I always have to uh, choose what the result of my calculation is going to be and it automatically tells me that it's going to be a number. This is uh, not going to work, for instance, in drop downs and stuff, it's going to give you a question mark. So you do have to pay attention that this calculation result is correct. A full name is not a number, a full name is a text. Okay, so that's kind of good. We've done our few fields already. We've got a calculation field. It was a pretty simple one, so that's kind of doable. What else do we need? Our contact lives somewhere, so that's an address. Address is a text field. Now you can go and use this uh, drop down, or you can just uh, click T on your keyboard to go to a text field. Now, sometimes you have to cycle through it because there is text, there is time, and timestamp. So, sometimes you kind of have to cycle through it by hitting T multiple times. Okay, so address is a text field. Let's create that one. Now, we have to determine are we going to put the house uh, number in this field or in a separate field? We can choose. Um, I will make a separate field. Uh, just in case and that's going to be a number field so I just hit N on my keyboard or you can just go in here and select number okay let's create this one an address a number what else do we need a zip code again I'm not using any spaces um, this is a f this could be a number but sometimes some zip codes might have letters in there as well I don't know which one you have so for safety I'm gonna take a text here and I'm gonna create this one zip code is a text field okay what else do we have the town or city um, is also a text field great can be added um, uh, you might be in a certain state that could be handy as well then what else do we have maybe the telephone number now in theory that would be a number but you could be adding stuff like uh, slashes or periods so I'm gonna keep this as a text um, then uh, we might have an email field um, it's also going to be a text field because it's got, a, it's got a lot of funky stuff in there. 
than a um, website address could be cool. Um, also a text field and what we could even do is add a picture of our contact. Now a picture is kind of a special field, it's not a text field, it's something else, it's a container field where we will store an image. So this needs to be a container, we can create that one as well and there we go. We've got a, quite a few fields, we've got our, our auto enter serial ID, we've got our calculation for the full name, this is looking kind of good, let's hit OK and let's see what we've got. We've got nothing here but if you remember we made a new contacts table so let's go into that one and this one as you can see it has automatically already added all the fields to our layout. If we go to file manage uh, layouts then we can just get rid of this first one because we don't really need it. There you go that one is gone and deleted. So now we've got one layout it's our contacts layout. Um, we have our field picker here we, that we can use to add fields to our layout but we don't really need this one right now so I'm going to close this one if we want it back it's under view field picker so we can always get that back um, I'm going to start out um, with a little trick that I actually always kind of use and that is I always make one uh, layout in table view and one layout in layout view, uh, in the form view. So we've got, we're in layout mode right now. That is the one we use to change a layout because we can take these fields right now and we can move them around, put them in a different order. That's uh, all of that stuff. Editing a layout happens in layout mode. You've also got other modes like find mode if, if you want to find um, your stuff, but we don't even have any contacts entered yet. We do have browse mode for that where we can enter data. We can try this out right now, go into browse mode and then we can see that um, we've got all these fields that are empty. If I would like to click one now, FileMaker is going to tell me that no records are present. To create a new record, choose the new record menu command. Okay, new record is up here. If we click this one, hey, we've created our first new contact. Now the ID number is automatically created. This is going to be contact number one. FileMaker has decided that for us and that's good so we don't have to worry about that. Now we can start by entering a first name. And as you can tell, this full name is going to be created by well adding the first and the last name together. I've just entered the first name but nothing is happening. That's because I'm still editing this field. I can um, save this field by going out of this field. I can go out of this field by entering the tab or by clicking the tab and that will bring me to my next field or I can just click outside of it or hit return on my keyboard. I'm going to hit the tab key then I'm going to then you will see that I arrive in my last name field which is handy I can immediately start typing here and my full name is already starting to be created I need to just add a last name nothing happens until I click outside here then my calculation has created for me a full name now I can start filling in all the rest of my stuff I can make him live at Main Street uh, number one in zip code 90210 that's the zip code we all know I think that's Beverly Hills and the state would then be California if I'm not mistaken mistaken and then I can just add one two three uh, uh, oh yeah usually it's like five 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 isn't it these phone numbers email is info at johndoe.com and we can just give him a website now we can add a picture as well we can just right click and go insert picture um, we can also, if you use this on a um, like an iPad or something like that, then um, you can immediately take a picture directly from inside. Um, this guy is an actor, apparently. Okay, so you can take a picture on your iPad directly from inside um, FileMaker Go by just pushing on this field and then the FileMaker will ask you if you want to take a picture you can just take it right away and it'll be stored right in this field immediately so that's kind of handy if you want to store contacts. Now we've got different ways to look at this layout we are now in form view but we can also go in table view. If we click table view then you can see it, it looks a little bit like an Excel sheet. You can make these a little smaller if you want but you've got all your data in here. Now what I like to do is always keep my original um, my original table 
So this one, the first one that's automatically created by FileMaker, I always like to keep this one in table view because then I always have a way to kind of go in there and look at my data uh, because sometimes these fields in, in table view, they can be obscured if you go into form view and you create, for instance, check boxes or radio buttons or stuff like that. And I, I really like to see what's actually inside my fields. So I always keep like a table view layout separate from my actual data entry layout. So how do we go about doing this? We do, we're going to have to go back for a second to form view. And then we go back into layout mode and then we can we get it, this new button here that allows me to create a new layout. If I click that button, FileMaker is going to ask me, well, what do I want to make a layout for? Well, for my contacts table. And I'm going to call this one Lay Contacts. That way I'm, I'm getting a new layout. I can see that it's a layout because it's the, this is going to be the layout for data entry. This is going to be for a computer and it's going to be in a form view. If I would make this for a touch device, I can also choose the orientation of the touch device, like an iPhone or an iPad. But for the computer, that's not going to be necessary. Okay, so now I've got my new layout, lay context. So I've got my context here that I'm going to keep. I'm going to exit the layout. I'm going to keep this one in table view. And then my other one here is going to stay in uh, form view so that my user can uh, use this as a data entry layout. But me as a developer, I can always go and see behind the screens what's going on. Maybe if there are fields that are not on the layout, I can still see them here. So this is a, big, a powerful one for uh, troubleshooting and, um, and stuff like that. Okay, so let's go back to our lay contacts. And now, I guess what we're going to do now is create our uh, layout for our contacts. How do we do that? There is nothing here that was kind of handy the first time I made my table. FileMaker added all these fields automatically. We're going to have to edit our layout ourselves, and we're going to have to add these fields manually. We're going to use the field picker, and what we can do is we can just select all of them. And so we can drag them onto our layout. But the ID field, I don't really want to see that one. It's a number that is entered automatically. I don't want to see that number. I don't want to have to deal with that number. I don't want my user to worry about that sort of stuff because he's going to ask you, what is that number? Why do I have to enter there? You don't have to enter anything. It's very simple. So if you don't want your user to worry about it, you just leave it out. The full name, I'm going to leave that one out as well because I'm going to do something different with that one. But all the rest of them, they can kind of go with me. Uh, I can choose how I'm going to place these ones. I'm going to place them vertically, which is kind of cool. And the, la the label should be standing in front of the field. That's fine. I'm going to drag all of these out and FileMaker is immediately going to drop all of them on my layout right here. I'm going to close this one. I'm going to exit my layout to look at my beautiful layout that I've just made. And I can see one first problem or, or an annoying thing is that I've got my name separated which is what kind of cool but usually I might know the people by their full name and I kind of want to see that full name in a way somewhere. Uh, we could add the full name field here but I, an, another th trick that I like to use is I will put the full name in large on top of the layout. I always like that, I think that's kind of good. We can add that field up here but I think a better trick is to just use the text tool go up here, click in the header up top, and then we can insert a merge field, or we can use control M. If we do that, FileMaker is going to ask me, well, which merge field would you like to add? And a merge field is a kind of field that you might use as well in a letter or something like that. When you want to have, for instance, the address, the number, the zip code, the city, all of that, if you want to add that in the, the, uh, in the letter, you can use merge fields for that. But we can also use merge fields on a layout. So I'm going to add my full name, and this adds the merge field. You can see it, but uh, you can see that uh, because of these little characters that show up, that this is a merge field. Um, I'm going to put this one here up top, and I'm going to go ahead and click these double A's here. That gives me a new toolbar, and that can, allows me to kind of change the uh, font size. And then I can put this full name. I'll make this a bit longer for long names. I can put it up top. And if I go back into browse mode now, then now I can see that my big uh, first name is on the top of the layout, which is kind of handy. Um, let's go ahead and make a new record just real quick. And let's call this one Jane Doe. 
and if we can if we browse back and forth now you can see that the name changes depending on the record where I'm um, currently on so that's a good one that's a cool one um, okay is this looking good if I use my tab then I can go through all of these fields that's really cool but it's kind of it's not very well laid out I think uh, I already know that in the, in the end I'm gonna be adding um, tasks and notes and I don't really have a lot of place for them right now so I'm gonna reorganize this layout a little bit I'm going to edit layout and let's see what am I gonna do I'm gonna use these email and websites fields and I'm gonna put them up top that's kind of cool that way I have them handy if I want to email someone I have the, their email address right there I'm gonna take this picture field and I'm gonna put it up here that's also good because then I can see the picture of the person and then I've got all my basically all my address fields I'm gonna get rid of them and put them somewhere else um, how what how what can I do to kind of save a lot of space I could use a tab control that's kind of a handy thing let's click it let's drag a box from down here to up here and then I'm creating a tab control and a tab control allows me to create multiple tabs for multiple uh, types of data so I'm gonna make one for address I'm gonna make one for notes those will be added later and I'm gonna make one for tasks Okay, so those are three tabs. Um, you can change the settings a little bit if you want. You can choose which one will be your default front tab. For now, this is the first one, address, and that's fine for me. So let's click OK. And now you can see that I've got uh, three different tabs here. That's kind of cool because if I add all my address data here onto this first tab, then I can make my tab control a lot bigger. And then I've basically saved a lot of space. Let's go back and exit our layout and now we can see that I've got all this room now to uh, put notes and I've got tasks that I can put up here and I even, even have a lot of space up here that I can just use for some uh, extra fields. We could add a few fun things to our layout now that we are working on our layout anyway. Let's quickly go in here and let's make these things a little bit smaller. And what we could do is we could uh, make it so that um, when there is an email address or a website that we can automatically either go to that website or send an email to this person we can make some buttons that could help us do that let's find out how we can make some buttons to um, make our job a little bit easier so I can say email I can make that into a little text here so I use my text tool to write it uh, to write a bit of a text here and to make it clear that that's a button I can make I can underline this and then I could choose a color like a blue that makes it look a bit like a hyperlink and then what I can do is I can right click on this one and I can go to button setup and then I could say uh, that this button needs to do a certain um, a certain action for me um, I'm gonna scroll all the way down because I think the send email is all the way down and then I've got a few options for this um, this button setup. I can change uh, to hand cursor when I go over the button. I like that one because that makes it clear to me that that's a button. I could perform without a dialog, but that's not very interesting in this case. I would like to have a dialog. Um, uh, I would like to maybe go back to button setup to add one thing. I'm going to specify one thing here. Um, what I want to specify, of course, is the email address that I'm going to be sending an email to because I do have to send that email to that contact. So um, I can send via an email client or an SMTP server. You can set up an SMTP server in FileMaker and then uh, it sends it that way. Or you can just use your email client, which is maybe a little bit simpler. I'm going to specify the address, so I'm going to do the to field and I'm going to go and say specify the uh, field name because if I specify the email address then I have to manually type it in here, that's not smart but if I use the field name here then I can go in my contacts uh, table and choose the email field so that for every contact the email will be sent to that person's uh, email address you can already type ahead some stuff in here if you want but I'm gonna keep this very simple because I don't know what I'm gonna, going to be emailing them about so I'm gonna do this and that's very simple okay let's try this out and see if this works let's see what happens if I click this is probably gonna launch my email program program and it's gonna take a little while 
but um, normally speaking um, you will get a uh, window of your email program that basically basically allows you to like this that allows you to um, send an email so the uh, email address is automatically um, shown up in the to field which is kind of cool we can also add a button for the website here and I'm gonna show you a different way to make a button let's go back to edit layout and let's choose insert picture and let's go and find a nice picture um, a picture for let's see what do we want let's see what uh, could we use maybe under the eye here um, what kind of um, this is not really good let's do that again let's find that thing first website okay go to website okay cancel okay take two we could also add a button to go to the website but instead of using a simple boring text we can add or insert a picture let's do that that's a good idea um, we can just um, look for for instance something like this and this is a PNG image which has some transparency transparency in it which is kind of cool because that way the transparency also kind of shows up here and that thing remains that image kind of remains remains transparent and that looks really good on our layout so this image can also become a button we just simply right click it and go to button setup and then um, we have to use a different type of action it's not a send mail but it's an open URL and let's specify the URL let's specify it and the URL is going to be our website of course so that for every contact we will be going to exactly that person's website now if we exit our layout we can see that this has become a button as well and um, if we click this button we would be going to the johndoe.com website now we can add something to this button if we want if we click this button and we go to um, position here then we can add a tooltip we can um, say, for instance, go to website. That's a, a good uh, tooltip. If we exit the layout and we hover on this one, it gives us that tooltip. Go to website. Or what we could also do is take that one step further. We can choose this button. We can edit this tooltip and we can say, instead of just simply go to website, we can um, say go to. And then we can use an operator here, as we have already learned before. We can actually put the website in here. And then we've got go to and this contact website. So let's try this one out. And then our tooltip says go to johndoe.com. So that's kind of cool and a handy way to tell your user exactly what he is going to be doing. So we could also use a, a, a picture for uh, the email if we want, but this way you kind of see, and the email could actually also have a tooltip, so this way you can see the two different ways of creating buttons. Sometimes you could be on your layout and you could be entering data, and if you tap uh, from the first name you tap, it goes to an incorrect field for now, because right now it goes from first name to website, then back to last name and then it goes uh, down there goes through all of these and then it arrives in picture and then it arrives in email so that's a bit of a strange order now we can change that going into edit layout we can go into layouts and set tab order if we do that we get a lot of these uh, numbers here and then we can kind of go and uh, start changing these numbers uh, and kind of decide what order we want so we want the first name first and the last name then we might want to use as a third one the address number four is then the number and so forth and so forth six seven eight and then i might want to go back up here nine uh, eight nine and then ten and then number with the picture we might not even want to go there so this looks kind of better um, yeah and it ends up with this one I also don't really need to go here so let's try that one out uh, you have this little OK that you need to click then let's go here and let's tap it goes through all of these and then these and that's a better order so it kind of makes that uh, cycle so that's a good way to kind of fix your order if it goes a little bit strange 
So a good start, let's start um, adding some fun stuff to this. Um, we've got our address, now let's add some notes. Um, there, is, there are basically different ways to add notes. Let's uh, have a look at the different ways that we could use. Um, the simplest way would be to go to File, Manage, Database and let's simply add a field called Notes. It's going to be a text field, we can simply add it. Okay, then we can go into Layout Mode. We can go and take the Field tool, we can drag it down and we could, I'll just put it here for a second because we actually have to bring this to our Notes tab. FileMaker is going to ask us which field we want to add and if we want to create a label or not. Let's create a label. Then let's go to our Notes tab here and let's uh, drag this one here. And this is one way to add notes. I can make this really big and if I want I can even go to Data here and I could say this has to be an edit box but I want to include a vertical scroll bar. Let's exit the layout. Let's have a look. Great. I can add notes here. But um, this is not really the best way to add notes because what if you add a note on a certain date? Um, and then you can add a note. But then this is not very organized. This is not very handy to, to kind of look through or to browse through. This is not really the best way to be adding notes, especially not if you're going to be making multiple notes. Um, eventually you will have a big text field and you'll have to scroll through it. It's not really the best way to do it. A better way to do it is to make a separate notes table and to relate those notes to the contacts. Okay, I don't really want to do it this way, so I'm going to delete these notes. I'm going to go to File, Manage, Database. I'm going to take this Notes field and delete it because it's really uh, not the best way to do it. And I'm going to go back to Tables and I'm going to make a Notes table. So let's create this one. Now we have our second table, kind of cool. And now we can... Um, go ahead and see what we're going to need in this notes table. Now if you remember from the first one I'm always going to start with an ID which is a number. I'm going to double click it and make this a serial number. That's what I want for every note so that I can separately identify every single note if I have to. Then because these notes have to be related to a contact basically when I write a note I also have to write down which contact this note is related to. I'm not going to have to do this manually. FileMaker is going to do this automatically for me, but it needs a, a field to do that in. This is going to be the contact ID FK. FK stands for foreign key. That's basically because we're going to be entering the ID of the contact in uh, this field in the notes table. So we're going to be entering an ID from a different table in this table. So therefore it's called a foreign key. This is going to be a number, that's good, let's create this one. And um, what else do we need? We might want to actually write a note. So that's going to be a text field. Um, cycling through these just by hitting T on my keyboard. So let's create that note field. And what else is important about a note is that an old note or a recent note, we might want to know the date. And actually, in fact, I don't really always want to manually enter that date. I just want to enter the note and I don't really want to worry about the date. So I want FileMaker to automatically enter the date the moment I create the note. So I'm going to call this one creation date. And I'm going to, this is not going to be a text field, this is going to be a date field and I'm going to create that but I'm going to go and look in the settings. Can I do something here with the auto enter? Well I can automatically enter the creation date. That's handy, it's right there. Okay, that's good. That's kind of what I would like. I don't really think I need a lot of other stuff in this field. Um, so let's say okay. And if we look here we can see that FileMaker has already created my notes. Um, layout here and I can go into table mode so I can see all my notes but I don't really need um, these notes here I'm gonna be putting them on my layout right here so actually what I'm gonna do first of all is I'm going to go to file manage layouts I'm gonna organize my layouts a little bit because otherwise they're gonna start to become a mess I'm gonna click new here and I'm gonna click folder and I'm gonna say tables for my table view layouts 
and I'm gonna co create another one called layouts for my um, for my layouts like my context layout now I made this in my table layout so that's not really where it's supposed to be but I can just drag it over there and then it kind of comes out uh, if I drag it to the left now I can take my contacts here and put it in underneath my tables my notes is also a table view but my context my lay context is actually a layout so I'm gonna place them like this you can just move them right underneath the folder and they will go in and then if I look here and I can see that I've got my contacts and my notes tables and I've got my layout for my contacts okay well organized that's very good now how do we add our notes here now the first uh, and simplest way to do it would just be to drag your field tool down and to just say I want my from my notes field I would like to have uh, my note field here but the, the bummer about that one is that you can just do that once you can create one field but that's it you can just enter one note and then you're done uh, you can't make any other notes plus there is another problem going on if we exit our layout and we try to to uh, enter a note here FileMaker is going to tell me I can't read it right now but it's going to tell me if I make it a bit bigger that this is a unrelated table I can't enter anything in here because this table is not yet related to my contacts that's a bit of a problem how will we solve this well there was this other tab in file manage database called relationships that might have something to do with this um, situation so I've got my contacts uh, here I've got my notes but there is indeed no relationship between the two now my contacts have an ID and I had prepared this uh, field here for my contacts ID so what I'm going to do is I'm gonna grab my ID I'm gonna click and drag and then I get this little uh, relationship align that I'm gonna drag this to this contacts ID FK and now I've created a, re a relationship between the contacts table and the notes table if I double click this one this uh, then I get uh, to edit the relationship and I get some extra settings now let's have a look at these settings and let's try and figure out what they mean so I've got my ID field of my contacts and that is equal to the contacts ID FK, FK field so that means that the value in this field is always going to be equal to the value in this field so if you're on your contact layout and you create a note then FileMaker will automatically enter the ID of your contact in this field so that uh, there is no mistake so that that note is definitely related to that contact so that's pretty handy FileMaker kind of solves this for you so you don't have to worry about it um, these IDs are also created automatically so again IDs that you don't have to worry about now we do have some settings at the bottom here and these are kind of important because um, I want to be able when I'm on the context layout I want to be able to create notes from the context layout so I have to check this first one that says allow the creation of records in this table so in the notes table via this relationship that's kind of important because um, I want to be able to create notes from the context layout another one here is delete related records in this table when a record is deleted in the other table so that means do you want to delete all your notes if your contact is deleted because these things are related to each other if you have a contact and you create a bunch of notes for this contact well what has to happen with these notes if you delete this contact now you could say well if the contact is gone then I don't need those notes anymore because those notes will be related to a contact that no longer exists these will be kind of like orphaned records so I can check this box and I can say delete my related records so delete my notes in this table when a contact is deleted in the other table so that's kind of good that keeps your database clean the only moment when this becomes an annoying problem is if you accidentally delete a contact and then of course all his notes are gone as well so that's not good but accidentally deleting stuff is just never a good idea I think this is a good setting so let's keep it like this okay this is set up kind of good let's go back in here to our notes now it doesn't say anymore that it is a unrelated record so let's see if we can enter a note here looks like we can let's figure out if we actually did let's go to tables and notes
and it looks like it worked. We've got our note and uh, it actually automatically says that this is ID number one, so the first note. It's related to my contact number one. That's kind of cool. Let's try something else. Let's go back to our layout. I did already have a second contact chain though. Let's make another note. And if we do that and we go back to our notes table, then we can see that this note has been at, uh, kind of like linked to automatically to our second contact. And this is to our first contact. Now, the only problem with this kind of system is that um, this is handy in a lot of situations, but for notes, it's not that handy because I do want to be able to make a ton of notes and that is not going to work using this system. So let's edit layout. Let's, oops, let's control Z. Let's uh, select these um, two fields here and or, or the field and the label and let's get rid of them. Now I just kind of accidentally dragged my tabbed object away. What I can do to prevent that from happening is go to position and then lock this one in place so that I can select inside it but this uh, tab object itself is going to stay in place. Now what can we use to make multiple related records? FileMaker has something for that that's called a portal tool. Let's click our portal tool, let's go down, leave a little bit of space here for the labels later on. So let's drag a big square here. And then we get again a portal setup, again settings we need to set up. What do we want to show? I want to show notes, very simple. Do I want to sort them? Mm, yeah, maybe by date. So I can sort and I can say creation date. And then I can choose do I want them ascending or descending. I think I want the newest node on top. So I think it's going to be descending. We can just check that out later on. It doesn't really matter. Do I want to filter them? Nah. Do I want to allow deletion of the notes? Yeah. If I make a note and that node is no longer useful, then I do want to delete that one. And do I want to show a vertical scroll bar? Yes, if we have lots of notes. Uh, and then now I'm going to have nine rows in this. That's okay. Um, for now. Okay, which fields would I like to see in this portal? I don't want to deal with the ID because that's uh, a useless link thing to me. The contact ID is going to be filled in automatically, so I also don't need that one. I do want to write the note and I do want to uh, see the creation date because that's kind of interesting for me. So I'm going to add those and then um, as you can see these are kind of uh, not really filled out entirely so I'm going to drag this one here make it a bit bigger but this is a date field so that can be quite small and then this note field is going to be kind of big something like this. Okay, let's exit our layout and let's take a look at how this looks like. Oh look, I can automatically um, add a new note here and then when I'm done with this note a, fi a file maker automatically enters the um, creation date right here um, that's kind of good that's a good start now sometimes I might be entering a note that's a little bit of an older note and then the creation date might not be right so I can get in here and I can start typing but actually date fields have a, a really cool thing you can click it go to data in your inspector and then you can say for instance the control style doesn't have to be an edit box but a drop down calendar and it has to include an icon to show and hide calendar and this is already shown up right here so let's try this out if I go back to my notes I can actually click this date and uh, click this calendar and select in a nice drop-down calendar I can select a different field and now we can see that the sorting is in fact leaving my most recent date up top and my uh, older date is down there so that's a good one one more thing we need to add is we want to be able to delete notes if we've got a wrong note I want to be able to delete it now uh, it's just this wrong note flooped up because of the date uh, FileMaker automatically sorts this by date so <coughs> my note is now here um, I want to delete this note how do I do that um, I'm gonna create a cute little button with a cross and put it in there so let's insert a picture I could also just type the word delete but uh, that's probably not the best idea I've got a little uncheck here, uncheck here, let's try this one again a little PNG image with um, transparency 
let's use the arrows on our keyboard to kind of bring it right there and then I'm gonna go right click go to button setup and then I have to kind of look at the different options that I have now I've got records here and I've got uh, delete record that's kind of a good one but that will delete my contact that's not really what I want I want to delete the portal row and I'm going to I could perform this without a dialogue but basically the dialogue is gonna ask me do you really want to delete this one and I think that's always a good idea to have that dialogue so uh, I'm gonna leave this the way it is and then let's try this one out let's exit the layout let's go back to notes and I've got my wrong note here let's click this are you sure you want to permanently delete this one related record yes I want to delete and now it's gone very simple I've got my warning so I don't accidentally delete anything and I've got my little um, cute little X button here okay that's looking kind of good one thing we might want to add as uh, some headers here and some labels here note I'm gonna uh, give this one the name note I'm gonna add it somewhere here and then I'm gonna control click and drag this one over here and you get these blue lines that kind of help you to align stuff um, dates there you go now I've got some cute little um, headers here so we know what the data in those fields is okay I think this makes a couple of nice or for a nice uh, note um, tab let's see what else we can do the next thing we could add is our tasks we've got our notes and our tasks is going to look very similar um, but it just might have a few different kinds of fields so let's go to file manage database we're gonna create another table and this one's gonna be tasks and we're gonna create this one we're gonna double click this one so we can add some fields as always I'm gonna start with my ID number field which is a serial number I also as the same as the notes have to relate the tasks to the contacts contact ID FK um, which is a number field so I know um, who this task belongs to I will have the actual task um, which is a text field and then um, I could have a few fields for instance like um, the date as well um, and that could also be creation date which is a date field and if I wanted the creation I need to um, do this extra uh, auto enter option um, you could also have for instance a completion date if you want um, we could add, actually add that and that will just be a simple date field that you manually have to enter because you don't know when it needs to be completed um, we can do some fun stuff with that and then we can have some uh, for instance an urgency is that an urgent task or not that could be a text field and we can have a status the status is for instance um, is it uh, completed or is it still incomplete um, you can actually um, there is a, f uh, a field here that I haven't really talked about yet you can make notes in here so um, complete or Incomplete. You could type that at the bottom there, so you can kind of remember. It's a bit of a, it's a bit of a. You can also click here to see your notes. It's a bit of a reminder of what this field was for. Sometimes you have a, a lot of fields and some special fields, and you forget. Uh, so this can help you remind stuff. It's always good to leave notes here and there in your uh, file, just as a reminder for when it gets a little bit um, big and complicated okay we've got our tasks made we need to go in here and we need to relate these tasks to our uh, contact and again it's very simple contact ID uh, click and connect those two up now we want to al uh, allow the creation of tasks and when my contact is deleted I don't need his tasks anymore so let's uh, check these two okay that's looking good I can go into tasks here I can go into edit layout and I can do the same thing as I did before uh, again a portal tool you make it a bit lower so that you don't really see uh, so you have some room for the uh, labels later on um, this is not from notes but from tasks um, do I want to sort them yes I do want to sort them but I'm gonna do that later on um, I'm gonna sort probably by urgency or something like that allow the deletion yes uh, show the scroll bar yes okay that's a good one 
Um, what do I want to see? I want to see my uh, tasks. I want to see the creation date, completion date, the urgency and the status. Okay, uh, a little annoying thing is that I don't have my labels yet, so I'll quickly make those. So I've gone ahead and quickly created some labels and now we can add our tasks. Uh, we can maybe make these date fields. We can go to data and make them drop down calendars. so that we can change those dates if we want and then there are a few other fields that we need to kind of think about what are we going to enter in the urgency field and in the status field now status could be complete or incomplete um, and so we can kind of make the, this data entry a little simpler we can give it either a drop down list a checkbox set or a radio button set now the status is going to either be complete or incomplete um, and it's not going to be multiple choice, so it's not going to be a checkbox set where you can choose multiple values. I think it's best to be to make this a radio button set where you can just choose either complete or incomplete. So let's do that one. Let's create a new um, value list for this, and it's going to be called uh, complete, incomplete, and the values will be complete or incomplete. Two very simple custom values now I think every single time that we create a task that task will still be incomplete because you've just created it so I think it's gonna be kind of silly to have to uh, select this incomplete all the time and I do want this this uh, value to be ent entered correctly because it's interesting for me to be able to see all the incomplete tasks so what I'm gonna do to ensure that that happens is I'm gonna go to file manage database I'm going to my um, tasks here and I'm going to go to my status and I'm going to say that my that file maker needs to auto enter some data into that field uh, when it's created and it needs to say incomplete. That way every created task is by definition incomplete. Okay, good. Um, urgency, now that's a different thing. You can probably have different types of urgencies and you can choose if that's a predefined list that you want to have or if people can just manually enter stuff in there. Now if people manually enter stuff in there, this might become a bit of a mess and so you might want to make a new a drop down list. Let's make one a new one for urgency and let's say not urgent, um, urgent, super urgent, disaster. Okay, let's have a look at this and see if this all works or not. Let's go to tasks and let's make a task. Um, call him ASAP. Oh, this is Jane, so it's call her ASAP. This is created today, which is good. The completion date, um, we can choose a date. We should probably do that today. We should call her ASAP. Urgency is super urgent and then um, it is incomplete right now because we haven't called her yet. Now, one thing we've forgotten to add here in the end is uh, like what we have here in our notes table and what we can actually go and do is copy this one. We can just hit control copy on Windows and we can go in here and paste this one in here. Now, my... Um, layout is getting a bit small I don't have any room, room here but I can cheat a little bit I'm gonna unlock this tab uh, control object here uh, just drag it a bit more to the side give it a bit more room right here that's kinda good and then I can lock this one again and I can take this one make it a bit larger so that I'm really using all the space on my layout I'm gonna copy this um, little delete thingy here and the button setup still says delete portal row so that's kind of good I can even give this a, a tooltip delete and if I exit my layout then I've got my notes my tasks and I've got my delete buttons that's good um, so I can do a test here to see if that delete really works let's go try this out yep and it's gone okay so now I can make tasks as well I have to call her ASAP. Let's go to John Doe and we can see that no tasks for John Doe exist. Um, I need to write him. And this is created on this date. I can maybe do this on a later date. 
uh, a couple of days from now. It's not urgent and it is incomplete. I could maybe have another task in there. Um, about uh, food or something. And let's say that this was a later um, note a couple of days ago. Completion date was uh, the day after. It was not urgent, but it has been complete, completed by now. So you, this shows you that you, you start to get a bunch of notes and tasks and stuff like that. Uh, and basically your database is starting to come to life. So this layout is based on the contacts table. So in this layout, we're going to be seeing all our contacts and our tasks are in there as well. But um, we have to scroll through every contact to see their tasks and to find out if there's any task that we need to be doing right now. But there is a handier way to do this. We can also make another layout that is actually based on the tasks table itself. And then we can just show all the tasks on one single layout and then we can see um, which ones need our attention. So let's um, go and do that. Let's go into Edit Layout and make a new layout. But this time we're not going to show layouts from contacts. We're going to show our tasks. And I'm going to call this one Lay Tasks. And actually we're going to make a list. So I'm going to call this one List Tasks. Uh, this is going to be for our computer. And I'm not going to use a form uh, view, but a list view. Let's uh, finish this and this gives me a, um, a very narrow kind of um, area here. It gives me a body, a header and a footer. And now I'm going to have to add some fields myself. I can do this again um, by using my um, view field picker here. Or I could just use this one to drag fields in. But I do kind of like this one because um, I can kind of tell, I can choose this kind of placement and I can put the labels above the field. So that might work for this one. Um, what do I want? I want my um, task to show up. Creation date, completion date, ur urgency and status. These are all kind of good. I want all of them. So let's drag them up here. The only difficult part is now to just kind of guess where the um, where the header is going to be and I also think that probably we'll, we'll guess like somewhat halfway I guess this probably is going to give me a bit of a problem with the layout oh no it's kind of okay the text uh, here is white so that's good it's readable um, we've only got uh, maybe a little bit uh, we've gone a little too high so let's select all our fields right here let's see if I didn't forget any no status is the last one and let's use our arrows to bring these down a little bit and then our body can be made a little bit smaller, a little bit more narrow here. Okay, that's great. Now our urgency field might be made a little bit smaller. And then our status field also needs to move up. Because it's a, a bit too far out. Now I um, had created some... Um, like this one was a drop down, so I'm gonna to have to redo that for this layout. This data was a drop down list, and the drop down list was urgency. And this one was actually a radio button set for uh, complete and incomplete. So I can see that this is now um, looking kind of good. And this one is working as well. So I've got the two date fields. I wanna uh, maybe turn these as well into drop down calendars. And then my task is here. My task will be a little small, so maybe I can take all of these and uh, move them over a little bit. And then I can just uh, take my task and just make it a bit bigger like this. There, so I can see a little bit more of my task. And now if I go into Edit Layout, I will see that I've got my tasks here. Um, but there is one problem, or maybe two problems. First of all, I don't like the fact that this one does have uh, fields around it, but the other ones don't. And this is because it kind of, FileMaker kind of highlights the active um, record for me. I don't really like that. So I'm going to go to Edit Layout, Layouts, uh, Layout Setup, and I'm going to uncheck this Delineate um, fields on current record only because I kind of think that that's a little, a little bit annoying so I'm gonna do that I'm gonna exit the layout and then you will see that you have actual fields around all of them now that's a personal thing that you can choose for yourself um, and just choose whichever one you like okay what's another problem um, first of all these dates are just you if the, these labels are just using the field names so they might not be completely ideal this is better and now one problem is I've got these notes of, or these tasks but 
call her, I don't know who her is, uh, write him, I don't know who him is, so I've got a bit of a problem. Um, we can solve this problem very easily um, by adding a, the name of that person. Now the name of the person is not in, in the task table, which is good because otherwise you would have to note the table for every, uh, note the name for every single task. That's kind of stupid. Um, but we do have the ability to simply add a field and in fact let's scroll back a little bit let's make our layout a little bit bigger then we can just take our field tool right here just drag it down add a field at the end here and we can simply go to the contacts table because that one is as you can see here a related table so to the tasks table we have uh, two related tables contacts is related and we can just go and get the full name we don't want to create a label in the front there, so let's do this. And then we have the full name of the person. If we exit our layout, we can see that Jane Doe, John Doe, John Doe, we now also see the names of, the, um, of this contact. Now this is handy, this is cool. We can take this one step further. Um, actually, we can take this a couple of steps further. We can because I want to call, I have to call Jane Doe, but I don't know what her number is. So then I'll have to go to my contacts layout and go look for her. That's not very handy. So let's do a couple of things here. Let's select this full name field. Let's make it an underline and a blue color so that we know that this is going to be a button. And let's do a button setup. What I want to do is go to that contact layout and immediately see the record for that contact. Now because it is a related record, we can use go to related record and then we can specify that I want to get a related record from contacts and I want to show it on the layout of the contact. So my lay contact. There you go. That's kind of cool. I don't want to show this in a new window. I also don't need to show only related records. I don't need to see only that one. Um, that one contact, I don't mind being able to scroll through all of them. So let's see if this works already. Let's see, we've got Jane Doe. So if you click this one, that brings us to our lay contacts on the um, Jane Doe um, field right here. And I can immediately see her uh, contact information. Now I go to a task and I see that um, basically this task is indeed here. If I go back to my list of tasks, then I can then deal with the other ones as well. If I click John Doe, it will show me John Doe's layout. This is kind of handy and this is kind of fun. We can organize this a little bit more in different ways if we want. We could, for instance, say, show me all the... Um, incomplete tasks on the top which is kind of already doing it, probably accidentally um, so um, that's happening already we could we could sort and we could say give me the status and we could sort by status so now it's basically the letter C that's up top uh, we can sort upside down in descending order and this is going to show me all the incomplete tasks on the top. So that's kind of good. If we would take this incomplete task and say that, okay, I've called her, this is now complete. If I uh, do this, then FileMaker will automatically make that record skip down because it is sorting um, the incomplete ones up top. So this is a very handy layout and a very handy way to see all the tasks for all your contacts and know which tasks you have to be dealing with. We can take this one step further to organize this a little bit better. We can go into Edit Layout and we could say, for instance, in Layouts, we can uh, go into Part Setup and we could create a new part so that we can basically group all these tasks by, um, by the contact, if you will, because um, because that might be a, a show me a bit of a better overview. I'm going to sort uh, so this sub-summary part by contact IDFK. Let's print that above. Okay, I'm done with that. And I'm going to um, basically add a text field here. And I'm going to do again the trick I did before, insert merge field, to enter the name of this contact the full name of this contact. Now I can make this a bit bigger and a bit bold so that it really stands out and I'm gonna put it here. Oops, make this large for long names 
I can maybe even place it a bit like this. And it's a pretty big, big field, so let's make that a bit smaller. Okay, let's exit our layout, and basically now we can see that nothing has changed. Why? Because that subsummary part is only going to show up when my records are uh, sorted by the, the um, contact ID. So let's sort them by, let's clear this one and let's say I want to sort by out of my table tasks contact ID FK. If I do that, then you see that they will show up. Now I've got my John Doe, he's got a couple of tasks here and my Jane Doe has a couple of tasks here. Um, so that is handy. The only thing about this that kind of makes that annoying is that now you don't see all your incomplete tasks on the top. You see, um, you're in, it's, it's nicely organized per person, but if every person has a bunch of tasks, then this system could be kind of annoying. Now it doesn't really have to be a big problem because you can always still sort by um, status. And um, I think this was in descending order. Let's sort this one. And then they do kind of show up like this. But it's annoying to have to go in here all the time. Um, you can just make that really simple by adding a couple of buttons on the top. And then you can sort either by person or you can sort in any kind of different way you want. And you can have those sorts basically stored and saved in um, some scripts that you can run. Um, because I like both of those views actually. Um, let's go back into edit layout and let's go and see if we can make this work for us. I'm going to make my header a little bit bigger so that I have a bit more room to place some buttons. And I'm going to select all of this stuff and drag it down a little bit. Okay, let's create some buttons. We have a button to here. And we can just create a big box and then um, we can perform a script or this is basically just going to be one simple step so we can just choose that simple step it's going to be a simple sort sort step and the sort is under found sets you've got sort records I'm going to perform this without a dialog because I'm going to specify the sort order before which is now so I'm going to click this one and I'm going to say um, this one it tells me status in descending order okay that's fine let's do that and so this one is sort by status that is stored by status or you could just say incomplete uh, up top I do want to show you a little trick right now if you've created a button and you want to change the text you have to use the text tool to select the text on the button so you can change it uh, incomplete on top there you go a button now we can make another button, we can control drag this button, that way we have the exact same size of button and we can put it next here. We can change the text and we could say sort by contact. And then we could uh, go to button setup and change the sort. So we can specify a different type of sort order, we can clear this. We can say contact IDFK and actually if we want what we can do is we can add a second uh, sort because we want to sort by contact but for every contact we want the um, incomplete ones up top. So we're going to do add this one in descending order. There you go and OK. So now we have two buttons and let's try this out see if this works. Um, they're actually not showing a hand, a hand, so I'm going to go back to button setup and I'm going to select this one, change to hand cursor, because I do like my buttons to have a bit of a hand cursor. There you go, because that way you can really see it's a button. So now I've got them sorted by contact, and for every contact it's got the incomplete one up top and the complete one uh, lower there. You could also change this. Let's try this sort and let's change the status here. Let's sort, and if I'm going to click sort, you're going to see that these two are going to switch place. See, now the complete one is up top and the incomplete one is down. But uh, I've just changed the sort manually here. My button will still sort by contact uh, the way it was before. And now I can do incomplete up top. There, I can see all my incomplete tasks. And I can e also see the person that um, uh, the contact uh, that this task belongs to. But I can sort them any which way I want, um, any which way I want to see them. So that's kind of handy. Um, Another thing we could do is we could, um, for instance, if we get a, a, a lot of t uh, tasks 
that um, are already completed and I don't want to see those tasks anymore, I could hide those tasks. I could, for instance, do a find. I could say, show me uh, only the incomplete ones and perform a find. Now it shows me only one, um, one task that still needs to be done. This could be kind of handy as well. And if I sort this one by contact, then I can see that I've got one incomplete task for John Doe. Now this is kind of um, this one becomes kind of useless then because the, in the complete ones are disappeared anyway. But you can still use this. It's kind of it's kind of uh, handy to have these up top. So what I can do is I can add a few buttons because I don't necessarily want to do this fine manually. I could add some buttons that say show me only the complete ones, show me only the incomplete ones, and show me all of the um, all of the tasks. So that's again the same system. I'm going to move these ones over a little bit to the side and then I'm going to add a few a few more. Let's just control drag this one over here. And let's say let's use a text tool and let's say show complete. Okay, um, this is a, going to be a slightly more complicated button because it has to do a couple of different things. Now, what does it have to do? How would I go about uh, showing all the complete tasks? Very simple. I go into find, I hit complete, I do perform find, and then I have all my complete ones. Now, if you um, remember these steps that you have to do, then you know um, how you can make a script to do this task automatically. Now, scripting sounds very complicated. People will probably think about programming and stuff like that, but it really isn't that complicated at all. You just have to remember the steps that you're doing. Go into find mode, choose incomplete, perform find, and there it is. And then you can maybe even add a sort to that script if you want. Um, let's go to scripts, manage script, and let's um, <coughs> let's create a script for this. Very simple. Um, you just go in your scripts there, go choose new. I'm going to make this a bit smaller so you guys can see. And now we have to, um, well, what was the first one we were going to do? Show complete tasks. Make, give it a, a handy name so you know what the script does and then we're going to think about what the things were that we were doing. First we went into find mode, that's the first one we did. Now when we, uh, we have all our options here in the side uh, bar, all the script steps that we can choose from and when we double click one it shows up in our script and this is going to be our script this is where we uh, add a bunch of different steps now I've added this enter find mode but it, it's, it gives me pause as an option and that option shows up down here I don't want this find mode to pause here I just want it to continue uh, because I don't want to manually enter any uh, find options I want those to be done automatically. So uh, let's uncheck that pause because otherwise my script is going to pause and it's just going to stand there and that's going to be kind of annoying. I don't want that. So what are we going to do? What was the next step we did? After we went into find mode, we clicked that uh, complete um, uh, radio button there. Now we can't tell FileMaker to click into uh, a, a button, but we can tell FileMaker to set a field to set a certain value into a field so let's double click this one and let's add this one now we're gonna have to tell FileMaker two things which field do I want to enter data into and what is the data that I want to enter into that field now this gives us um, kind of a unique um, bit of a problem if you will let's close this one for a second and let's save it now we have to kind of find out what's the value is because I've got complete and incomplete and actually that those are the values that show up in that field I can find out to be certain I can go to my tasks here and I can see that um, the status is either the word incomplete or it's going to be the word complete so that's kind of cool that's what I'm going to need uh, in my script so let's go back to my script manage scripts Let's go into the script and I know now which field I need to have. I can specify the field in my tasks table. It's going to be the um, status and my calculated result, which means the value that I want to enter into that field is got to be complete. Now, if you just enter complete like this, FileMaker, FileMaker will start looking for a field that is called complete, which you don't have. So if this is a simple text, then you need to put quotation marks around it. 
like that. So I want the value complete to be entered into the status field. Okay, kind of good. Um, once I've done that, what did I do then? I hit the perform find button up top. So let's go and see if we can find that one here. Under found sets, it says perform find. Now you have to be careful because there's another one of those things. Um, I think here it says perform find replace I've actually never ever used that one so I don't really know exactly what it does but I always use the perform find here which is the one you're gonna want uh, to do your find now if you want you can add a sort script step 2 um, I'm gonna show all the complete tasks what do I want to do with those I don't want to sort them by uh, the incomplete tasks up top because I don't have any incomplete tasks I'm only going to be seeing the complete task so I might want to sort these by um, by contact so I'm just going to go and to my found sets it has a sort records I'm going to perform this without a dialog because I don't want FileMaker asking me how do you want to sort this I'm going to specify that sort right now and it says contact and status it doesn't really have to sort by status because I'm only going to see one status. So I could clear this one and make it real simple. There you go. If our um, actually if our tasks have a date, then I could uh, add, for instance, the creation date in there, and let's put them like this so that they are sorted by um, newest ones up top. So that's kind of a good one. We could maybe add that to the other sort as well, the sort button we have up top. Um, this looks kind of good. We're going to enter find mode, uh, look for all the complete tasks, and then sort. OK, kind of good. Let's close this one and let's save our script. Now, how do we make this button run that script? Very simple. Just go into button setup and perform, oh, not perform find, but go away all the way up top and choose perform script. So when we click this button, a script is run. Which script? Specify show complete tasks. That's the one we're going to want. OK. And change to hand cursor is set. So that's good. Let's try this out and see what it does. I've got only one incomplete task now. Let's click this button, see what it does. It shows me only the complete tasks and it sorts by um, contact. So that's kind of cool. I can now uh, say sort me by the incomplete ones up top, but that's not really going to do much good. It's just going to get rid of that sub summary part, but I've got no incomplete tasks, so nothing is going to show up on top. So this is kind of not an interesting sort when we are showing our complete tasks. Now we can also show our incomplete and we can show all our tasks. So let's uh, control drag this one over here. Let's use our text tool to show in complete it's just big enough now I'm gonna want this to run another script I'm gonna go back to scripts manage scripts and I can actually duplicate this script because this script is going to be almost exactly the same except this is going to be show incomplete show incomplete tasks I'm gonna go into find mode I'm gonna set my field uh, status uh, not for the value complete but for the value incomplete and the rest is going to stay the same. So let's uh, close and save this one. Now I've got two different ones. And this one has to go button setup, perform script, and perform the other script. Because I copied this button, it's kind of still show, uh, giving me the same settings as the other one did. Let's uh, click on this button, see what it does. And this now shows me only the incomplete task for John Doe. I can see all the completed tasks and all the incompleted tasks. So that's kind of cool. If I want to reset this and show all my tasks, I need another button. Control, drag, something like this. Text tool to select and show all. This could be a bit smaller because it's a little shorter text. Let's go to script, manage script, and let's duplicate another one. Now there are a couple of different ways to do this. I could simply, um, well actually the simplest way to go about is to go to found sets and say show all records. Uh, I don't need to enter find mode for this. I don't need to set a field or perform a find. I can just show all the records and then I can sort them. And the sort is, uh, if I want, maybe not by creation date then, but by status again. 
or actually I have this one by status here in that button so I can maybe just leave this one actually by status is the most logical one so let's use status in descending order okay let's do that that's kind of a good one let's perform without dialog and specify sort order that's good let's close and save this one and this one is still got the, the wrong name show all tasks let's close save and then let's link up this button with that script a button setup perform script specify show all tasks okay okay exit layout and now we can show all show incomplete or show complete and this really um, this kind of um, buttons and automation really makes it easy for us to just go into our tasks and just um, get some work done we can show all our incomplete tasks and we can see for instance that John Doe is an incomplete task and if we call them we can just say uh, that this is done and then if we show all are incomplete we will see that we don't have any complete ones showing up anymore one problem though it says no records uh, match to find this criteria uh, it's kind of an error because I'm not finding any incomplete tasks so I'm going to continue um, I don't want that error to show up so let's go back into our scripts and let's add a little something let's add a, a set error capture let's add it up top and what that does is it's going to capture these kinds of uh, error um, uh, messages that FileMaker could throw up because your user if he sees that he might get a little scared he might go and get on the phone with you uh, something weird is going on and you don't really want to have to deal with that so let's um, use this set error capture on I'm gonna copy this one control C I'm gonna close and save this one and I'm gonna set this error capture in every single um, in every single well I don't probably don't need it here because show all records is always gonna work so in these two f where I have finds I'm going to uh, error capture as well so show me the complete ones that's all of them show me incomplete it shows me nothing but it also doesn't uh, give me uh, an annoying warning pop-up so that um, is an improvement and I think this is a layout that you can really kind of um, that you can really get to work with and that can really make your life a lot easier okay I think that's kind of good for this layout let's see what else we can do we now have a couple of different layouts we've got our task list we've a list we've got our um, contacts list here but it's kind of annoying to move back and forth between those um, between those layouts like this and maybe you don't really want your user to go messing around in here as well because he might end up somewhere like this and then he won't know what to do or he won't uh, know how to get out of here so what I always do is I make a menu a menu that gives you a different buttons to kind of um, always return back to and then to go to other parts of your database what I like to do is um, I'd like to make a separate table for that just so you don't ac accidentally make any mistakes because in that menu if you base your menu on an existing table you could accidentally uh, create new records or delete existing records um, without intending to so I like to make a new menu layout uh, a new menu table and then I will add an ID field just because I always do anyway and then um, you don't really need any fields in there but I like to use a C current date um, basically just to display the current date which is going to be a calculation field and I like to just put it in there and you've got a bunch of uh, get functions in FileMaker that you can use to get all kinds of stuff like for instance the current date uh, and get current date is one of those you can find that in the get functions if you double click it then that gets added here the calculation result is going to be a date <coughs> and um, there is one thing very important I want this um, calculation I don't want it to just to get the current date today and to keep that date because it needs to get the current date again every day uh, otherwise it's going to just keep today's date and that's not handy you can force that by going to storage storage options and saying 
um, do not store calculation results so that means recalculate when needed so that means every time I go into my menu um, FileMaker will recalculate the current date and so it won't uh, the date won't just stay stuck on the same date dates this is a very important thing also when you're going to do some, something like uh, calculating the, the difference between dates or calculating someone's age you cannot store that because it's not going to update okay very simple let's go and click OK so now we have a menu it has a date in here it doesn't have any records but we can just quickly create one record now I don't really want to see any of these fields on here what I do want to do is go on uh, in the header here and write menu so that everybody knows where they are let's make it really nice and big and then maybe what I want to do is put the date somewhere up here so let's do insert merge field and let's go not from the contacts but from the menu table let's add that current date and, and I'm gonna put that like here somewhere and then I can go into my data and then in the bottom of my inspector I can kind of choose this uh, date thingy here and I can format the date if I would like to but it's looking probably pretty good as it is alright so um, that's kinda cool let's exit this layout and okay we've got a nice looking menu now I need to add some buttons uh, but also I need to make sure that this menu is set up so that every time I open my file I arrive in this menu you can do that by going to file file options and then you can log in and switch to a layout. Now I'm going to switch to my menu layout. That's kind of good. And in my menu layout, I'm going to go to edit layout. I'm going to do the layout, layout setup. And I'm going to make sure that in my views, the only view available is the form view and not the list or the table view. So people can't accidentally switch my menu to a table view and become completely lost. So there, I've got my menu. Uh, now I need to add some buttons. Let's edit this layout let's go to insert picture and let's say what do we have we have contacts what is a contact like let's say my contacts are business people do we have something for that yeah you're a guy in a suit these are again icons from um, I, there is this website that I usually go to called easy icon and you gotta take the language in because otherwise it's like a sh Chinese site or something it's really weird uh, and you can just <coughs> you can just um, search for something and then you can just you, you get all kinds of kinds of options uh, if you click on an icon then it gives you all kinds of um, options in all kinds of different sizes what I usually do is I use the PNG because that one has transparency that I can use in FileMaker so I've got my little guy here um, my contact I'm gonna add the word contacts in here and what I usually do to make it look like it's a real button is I'll use one of these rounded rectangles and I'll just drag it around this guy a little bit now it's kinda of stupid because I made them in the wrong order um, but I can change the order here I can arrange this one to be sent to the back and then the other ones uh, show up again um, I've got my box here and I want to kind of give it a, a decent size so I can go in here and if these settings here in position are still on centimeter you can just click on the centimeter to bring it to points. Points is an easier um, way to kind of go about making your uh, your, your sizes. So I want to make this 125 and the height I'll just take it about 150 that sounds about right. Now I can take all of these, select them all go into my arrange and align and I can just align them on the vertical centers kinda like this and then I can choose where I want my contacts to, to be. I can put it in the middle somewhat like that uh, or or I can put this one a bit higher and I can put this one a bit higher as well so that in the future if I have a button with a long name or two names then I can just um, use the space under here to add some more text okay this looks like a nice button I gotta give this a position somewhere but it doesn't really matter right now this looks kind of good now I've got uh, my contacts here I need to make my button go to my contacts layout so I'm gonna make this a button I'm gonna say I'm gonna give this a very simple go to layout and I'm going to say uh, specify the layout as the lay contacts. That's where I want to go. I want this to be a hand cursor, so that's kind of cool. If I do this, let's see if this works. 
I can click on contacts and boom, I show up on my contacts layout. Now I just need a way from here to go back to my menu and I can simply add a button here, up top. And I can call that menu and I can say go to layout, layout menu. Very simple. Now what I like to do is I like to give this a decent position, 10 and let's say 5. 10 from the left and 5 from the top. That's a good one that I can remember so that I can place this button exactly the same on every single layout so it looks kind of similar and it's on the exact same position. Now I can change the size as well a bit. I want to make it 80 and the height is 33. Yeah, that's fine by me. So it's I have to remember the position. It's 10 and 5 because I've got other layouts where I want to put the same button. So I'm going to copy this button and before I do I'm going to check out if my hand cursor is on. It's not so I'm going to turn this on and then I'm going to copy this button again. Copy and then I'm going to bring this to my other layout, my list of tasks. So I'm going to uh, paste this one here and if I remember correctly I think my position was 10 and 5 because FileMaker doesn't remember the position and doesn't paste it on the same spot. So now I've got, uh, if I go into browse mode by exiting the layout, I can click on menu, I can go to contacts and from contacts back to my menu. Now the only thing I need to do is add a button to go to my task list and then I am golden. Let's control drag this whole thing and let's make sure that it stays lined up like that. And let's say I've got task list actually what I want to do is I want to line these out in the middle and now I might have to arrange these again yeah somewhat like this uh, let's arrange this one as well so that's definitely in a good position okay task list I don't want this guy anymore so I'm gonna insert another picture which one will I choose uh, probably something like a checklist or something like that do I have a checklist? Yes, I have a checklist. Now, what I would like, what I always like to do to get this in the exact same position as this one, either you go here and you remember these values here, but this is a very, very strange value, which is not really, it's kind of weird. I don't really want to want to deal with halves, um, but what I can do is I'm, I can just select both of them, then I can use my arrange here to align the top edges and align the left edges that way my um, check check boxes are now in the exact same position as my guy the guy is hidden uh, in the background so I can just arrange this one to send it backwards then I can deselect it and select my guy and delete him and now he's gone I've got my contacts and my task list I can go to button setup and go to layout layout list tasks Okay, let's see if this works. Let's hit Control B to go back into browse mode. I've got my contacts, my menu, and my task list. Awesome. And back to my menu. So this is a very simple way that you can make a beautiful looking um, menu. Everyone that opens your file will end up in here, and then, um, or will start from here. And that's also a good way to, for instance, control if you have different users. Maybe some users can go in here and some users can't go in there. So you can control uh, everything from inside your menu. You can control where people are allowed or are not allowed to go. So I think this makes a nice looking um, beginner example. Um, is there anything extra we can add? You know what? Actually, we can. Let's go into edit layout and add some fun stuff. Let's double click on this one. I can't change anything because this one is locked. So let's unlock it for a second. Double click again. Let's add a simple uh, web website a tab and let's add a map tab. These are two, two kind of handy things you can do in FileMaker that we hadn't shown yet. So let's see if we can add these. You have two things here uh, or one thing here, a web viewer tool that you can use to display, for instance, a website or a Google map for with an address. So let's put the web viewer on here. And this one is the website tab. So we're going to go to a custom web address. And the web address is not going to be this one. We're going to specify it. The web address is, we're going to delete all of this stuff. We're going to select and delete. The web address is going to be our website for our uh, client, of course. So um, we get a bunch of settings here, uh, but let's say that these are all okay. Um, and then we have to, let's go back into browse mode and let's see 
Um, we've got a website here actually, uh, johndo.com. I don't think that's going to work, so let's say that johndo is a Google guy. And then if you click website, let's see what happens. FileMaker will actually go and load that website of that client for us. So if you quickly want to look up some info uh, on this client, then we can use this uh, this one or we could just basically click on this one. It's, it's kind of the same, but the option is there. And if you don't want to show a website in here, what you might be able to do, which could be kind of handy, is you can use the map function here and you can add the same web viewer and instead of using a website address you can use a Google Maps and you can kind of define all the um, all the uh, fields uh, from your contacts you can put them in here the city you can put the address in there you can have a state and you can have a zip code the zip code and then the country yeah that's gonna be you that we don't have a field for that but we don't have to fill this in I, th I think we can give this one a try let's see what this does now the address is completely made up so this might not work um, let's see what our map displays it's going to look for something uh, but it's probably not really going to show us anything um, quite interesting uh, it, it shows a map and it's looking for something but um, this address doesn't exist but uh, this is a very handy way now my uh, screen resolution is only very small for the screencast um, but if you have like a slightly larger uh, screen resolution this kind of thing could be really handy to just quickly see where uh, a client of you is located where exactly he lives if you need to go there or if someone uh, is, is, is going to be driving there and you can this is just simple the, the Google Maps website so you can immediately create a directions from your place to his place etc etc so you can really use this to the fullest so these are some cool extra features that you could be adding to your uh, contacts database so we have our contacts layout and until now we've just been browsing back and forth between these contacts which is kind of good but sometimes you might want to see a list or you're looking for someone and then just clicking through here is not that handy you can use the search function function if you want but sometimes a list is just a more an intuitive thing to look at so what we can do is we can go and make a list for our uh, contacts so we can more easily get an overview um, let's go to new layout let's go to con let's make one based on contacts list contacts this is going to be for our computer and it's going to be a list so now we get our list we can go back and get our um, field picker back we would like to add what do we want to add the full name address number zip code do we want to add all these fields maybe it's handier if we just have the um, telephone number and the email so we can click those right away maybe what else do we need city state city let's just use this let's put them like so and like this let's drag this over here half and half okay looking kinda good that's it for my field picker the full name field is uh, let's see that all the fields look like they're a little high so let's drag them down a bit and this body field can be a bit smaller there we go let's see the fields are all a bit big so I'm gonna um, oops, control Z I'm gonna uh, make them a bit smaller and then you can just adjust them a little bit so it looks a bit better So I've made the labels uh, and uh, the fields a little bit better, so that looks uh, kind of good. If we exit our layout, we can see that we again have that annoying um, delineation. So let's go into layouts, layout setup, and let's deselect this one. Okay, so now I can see all my contacts, I've only got two, and I can see their information. So if I'm looking for someone, I can immediately call them, or I can immediately email them if I want. I can make this email into a button, as we've done before. Now, uh, there is always a kind of a trick 
I can do a send mail and I can specify this um, field name as the email. The only bummer with this is that if you now um, would like to enter someone's email address in this field, you cannot click this field anymore or you, you can't click this field but if you click this field you're basically launching that button the only way to get into this field is to maybe for instance go in here and then tap this way you can type into this field so you can get in there but if you turn that field into a button then you cannot click on that field to enter a field name now if you don't want to enter the field name in this layout then that's fine or the email address in this layout then that's fine you can do it this way but uh, usually what you would do then is put the button next to the field uh, like a send email button here so you can uh, send the email um, that way because if I would now like to enter Jane Doe's email address that would not work um, now this layout is usually not the one you're going to use to enter data usually this layout is going to be full of existing customers and so you'll probably have their email address and um, also um, if you want to make sure that this uh, people see that this is a button you can just uh, make this blue and underlined and then people will kind of see that oh yeah I shouldn't click that because that's immediately gonna make me email um, so that's a choice you have to make do you want to do that or not uh, what you do want to do in this one is make this a button as well and you can make this a go to layout layout lay contact so basically what we're gonna do is if you click this button we're gonna go to the contacts layout but if we click on this field then that um, you can kind of see that the blue one is the active one so if you click inside a certain record then that record becomes active and if you then go to another to the contacts layout uh, then that one is the one you're going to be seeing so basically uh, this button brings us to the contacts layout and because we've clicked inside this record this is going to be the record we're going to be seeing so we're going to make sure first that it, people know that this is a button we're gonna do it like so and now if we click for instance John Doe because Jane Doe is selected if you click John Doe we will arrive at John Doe now we need to be able to get from here into that list so I'm gonna move this one over just a little bit I'm going to take this menu move it like so and then I'm gonna use my text tool to say show list and I wanna make this button a little less prominent a little smaller there you go let's make a button set up go to layout layout uh, list contacts that's good a show list okay now we can go back and forth from Jane Doe to our list to John Doe there we go back to the menu contacts list and we can just maneuver everywhere we would like to go kind of good I think so this is it. it, was a simple exercise, but I hope it taught you something about FileMaker. Um, if you have any problems or there's something that you don't understand, you can always let me know and I will try my best to answer you as quick as possible. Um, remember that this is just a very small, simple beginning and you can build on to this as much as you want. In our next exercise, we're going to do an invoicing solution and we're probably going to add that one to this solution. So that's going to make this one even more interesting. Alright, see you soon. Ciao.